Welcome back to another Wednesday on The Pink Perspective. I'm your Wednesday host, Yekka. And this week, quite appropriate for the time of year, we are talking about pagan weddings. So our question from Jenny Vamp is, I'm getting married this year, and congratulations. We will be having a pagan hand fasting of our own design. But what are the pagan, uh, excuse me, what are the wedding slash marriage traditions from each of your perspectives? Did you have a pagan wedding? If you haven't, would you want one? Would you want to incorporate aspects of paganism into different styles of wedding? Um, all wedding thoughts. So again, congratulations. That's fantastic. Um, and this is a great time of year for this topic. I also want to say just quick, um, this video, I'm going to talk just about weddings, um, but really interesting timing on the Pagan podcast I do, The Wonder, with Mark Green. Uh, this episode coming out on Monday is actually on rites of passages in general. So we touch on weddings, but on a lot of other pas of rites of passages. So if you want a little bit more of my take on the broader topic, go ahead and check that out, which will be coming out on Monday. But for weddings, um, I think what I want to do with this video too is kind of address my thoughts on uh, weddings and marriage in general, and then share what we did in our pagan wedding, and particularly how we handled it being a pagan wedding with, although with quite a few pagan family members, with non pagan family members as well. And how did we, how did we handle that and address that? And so it might, there might be some um, useful tips for folks who are kind of balancing that in their own lives as well. So my thoughts on hand fastings, weddings, marriage. Uh, first of all, sometimes when people say hand fasting, they may be referring to a um, time period, like a year and a day sort of test run, or they may be using that word to mean the same thing as someone might mean for a marriage. So I think that marriages are what the people involved decide they are. There are some Kind of cultural expectations that we have, but just because the one thing it works for the whole culture doesn't mean that that's what's going to work for the couple or whatever um, arrangement it is, whether it's two or multiple or whatever that is there. So I think that it the different rules, I mean, rules, different expectations, or different agreements are going to work for different relationships. And so what a marriage means to each person is going to be really different. So I would, if one is looking into this or has, is considering it, I would strongly encourage you to make sure that both or all of you are really on the same page for what a marriage is and what, what are the expectations within that. Because I think that um, clear communication is really, really important in a healthy relationship. And my, for me, the marriage that I am in is about a relationship in which we want to nurture each other and to support each other and take care of each other in the most loving, fulfilling way that we can. We also did choose after, we lived together for about five years before getting married. And part of the getting married part was um, a financial decision, frankly. Um, we, <laughs> we did the math of the difference between filing um, singly and filing jointly and went, oof, ooh, like, we got to do this. Um, but I actually don't think that those two things should be mixed. I don't think it's really appropriate. I think that religion um, and state and all of that should really be separate. So I would very much support if we had if we separated those things out um, so that I don't really think that the government has any business in telling people about what kind of relationships they have and to be giving their blessing or not blessing to people's 
to individuals relationships with each other. So that's kind of my overall take on on what um, kind of made marriage in general is really looking at what does it mean to you for and as for us it is really about supporting each other in a loving nurturing way and that communication is so so key and so when we were getting ready to get married and we were thinking about our wedding we talked about what were the things that really mattered to us what did it mean to us what was this ritual this ceremony that we were going to go through with what was important what did we want included and neither of us had ever been people who'd like dreamt about the dream wedding that some people have you know that has been a part of their their childhood fantasy is you know imagining the wedding day for us neither of us were really sure that we ever were going to get married it was never really a, like a thing but we did kind of go over and talk about what were the things that were special to us and what did they represent um i did end up getting a dress right a lot of what we did was not very conventional but i wanted to be in a pretty dress and um have some photos taken of me in the pretty dress and us in our little like wedding pose and actually i will find a photo and stick it in for you guys so you can see um and we talked about what did it mean to us so what were we actually doing in the wedding um, and then we also considered uh, the people who we were going to be inviting to the wedding because for us partly the wedding the ceremony itself was about our commitment to each other but it was also for our families and um very much for our parents, although we think that our our parents would have been perfectly happy and, and loved the other person very dearly and deeply already, being that we had been together for many years at that point. But we wanted to give something to that community as well. So we thought about what would be meaningful and what would be special to them. And then we also took into account that a lot of my family's pagan. Um, but not all of it and being too overt well we aren't theists anyway so we didn't have any like gods we were going to be calling in or anything like that um so you know i guess we were a little bit more relaxed with that but but we wanted to do something that was meaningful to us and communicated that without it being alienating so that it was really important to find a balance there and um what we ended up doing is doing kind of two ceremonies so or two things first we did a very small ceremony which was the actual wedding ritual ceremony um and that we invited only our parents siblings and then their you know spouses and children which already ended up being like <laughs> um just shy of 30 folks um because we both come from families with lots of siblings and then the next day we had a big gathering at a park where we just invited all our friends and it was the both of them were kind of potluck style and people showed up and um and that way we didn't feel like people were being left out you know someone wasn't getting invited to the wedding and who was and who wasn't and all of that you know it was a we had a way of balancing that and then we just did court um we just went down to the county building and signed the paperwork but for the ritual itself what we did was we made it an actual ritual um and for all of the family members because it was different than the conventional or traditional classic wedding i wrote a little one page letter or explanation to everyone ahead of time and let them know what was going to happen when and why you know, what what was that and i didn't go into the super depth of it um, but just so that everybody who came knew what to expect and why, because when things were a little bit different, you know, emotions can be really high at this kind of thing. And so we wanted everyone to feel prepared and, and, and ready. So it was a very short ceremony. We had people arrive. We did an evening celebration because where we are, this time of year, the sunsets are spectacular. They're just amazing. And it's our monsoon season. We got lucky and didn't get rained out. 
um, it was actually fairly clear. And so we chose to do a ceremony that started at sunset because it was just stunningly beautiful at that point. We went to my stepmother's um, property and in her beautiful garden, which is her land was right next to the land where I was born and then the land, you know, neighboring the land later that we now live on that's our, that's our forever home. So it was very special to be there in the place and to get married and my birthplace and all of that. And um, in her garden, this desert garden, um, we have a, uh, a sukkah, which technically you're supposed to, um, by tradition, those are supposed to be taken down, but we have one that is pretty much standing there the whole time. And uh, as people arrived, it was a potluck they ate. And then we gathered in the sukkah and um, being only 30 folks or so, we all stood in a circle. And at one end of the circle, was my partner and I, um, and on either side were our parents. We each have one uh, living um, parent, and they started the, the ceremony. We had them each, they had five minutes or so to get to say whatever they wanted to us. And then we moved around the circle, and each person in the circle had the opportunity to say something short. We asked them to keep it short, you know, we joked that it was a tweet, uh, a tweet wedding. Um, so they got to say some sort of um, blessing or read a poem or some people, you know, were not, didn't feel like speaking. You know, there were some very young children um, who just got to say like, I love you, I love you. You're gonna be my auntie and my uncle, yay. Right, um, and we went all the way around. And then at the end, we each said our own vows that we had written um, to each other that were just a few sentences and um, kissed and then went and had cake and that was the wedding right it was about five minutes ten minutes and then the rest of it was just our family being together in the beautiful evening eating some delicious cake um, and enjoying each other so out of that for us, the, the, it, we had the circle structure, the coming together and the exchanging of the vows. Um, there was a lot of symbols that we put up in the garden that were very important to us. And it was close enough to some of the traditions that people were going to expect that it was comfortable for our non-pagan relatives. And it was completely witchy enough and um, pagany enough for all the pagan folks. So that was the, the balance that we struck there. Um, and just a couple of other things. We chose not, we asked people not to bring cameras. Well, if they, they could have had cameras, but not during the ceremony part. But we wanted everyone just to be treated the way, you know, basic um, kind of ritual etiquette, etiquette. You know the word I'm trying to say, etiquette. Um, that one would expect, um, even though there were folks who would not be familiar with that, that's what the little letter was about. Um, so yeah, that, that was our pagan wedding. Um, and then, as I said, the next morning we got up, that uh, was a beautiful night. We stayed up and together watched the, the stars and there actually were meteors that night. And it was, um, you know, very magical. And then in the morning we drove to the county house and stood in line and signed a paper and then went to the park and and uh, hung out and blew bubbles and had sort of the more we had the reception that everyone was invited to. So let me look at the question again and see. Um, I think that my, my real takeaway I wanted to share with all of you an example of a very pagan wedding. Um, that was one that, in, that invited more than just pagan folks into it and tried to make it comfortable. Um, but my, my real takeaway would be to really think about the things that matter most to you and why they matter. What are you doing? What does it mean? And then if you have, and just for anyone explaining ahead of time, what someone's going to be in to expect, I think is just a nice, respectful way of doing it. So anyways, 
that is talking about weddings. Uh, thank you for letting me share about mine. We're uh, in just a few days going to have our, our fifth wedding anniversary, um, which funny story that was when New Horizons was going by. Um, and New Horizons had had that like disconnect um, where they lost a signal with it. And so like, we were completely, you know, no internet and totally off grid at that point where we were having the wedding and I was really nervous. Like I kept thinking about it during the time about, oh, is New Horizons okay? And then it turns out New Horizons did wonderful and took those incredible photos. But um, yeah, thank you so much all. Um, if you, I'd love to hear if you have, if you had a pagan wedding um, or if you had one that wasn't particularly pagan, but there were certain things that really you'd love to share, or if you're just dreaming about it at some point, like what are some ideas, what are some things that you would like to incorporate, please let us know. And I can't wait to see you next time.